So, Disha, let me come to you. You know, we've been reeling out these statistics, but the fact is that our habitats are disappearing, you know, and there's a lot of stress on that. Uh, so, one, you've been very, very active in this zone. You also are looking at government and policy and, you know, the, why things are eroding the way they are. Uh, so, talk to me a little bit about which are the habitats in India that are under stress, why does it matter, and what is the government doing wrong uh, in its policy? Um, thank you for that, Shoma. Uh, because you started with habitat, let me come uh, with one statement that people often make, is that our forest cover is increasing. But if you look closely at the data, you will see that it's the open forest cover that's increasing. And open forest cover, if you look at the definition of it, it's so vague and sometimes it's defined as just, um, you know, 30, 40 trees in like a park. So. You can go down to a park, find trees that are just, you know, sticking or growing next to each other, and that would be considered a forest. And because of the vagueness of the definition, you can just say your forest cover is increasing, but this is the case for a lot of our environmental norms because they're so vague, they're so um, ill-defined. The, the data can be manipulated, and this was the case with the recent Forest Conservation Act that they're amending. Um, what they actually brought it uh, quite recently was on October 2nd, if I'm not wrong, and uh, it was only published digitally, firstly, and it was only published in English, and not the, firstly, the, the whole country doesn't speak English, and the whole country is in the online, so firstly, it's inaccessible, and the second uh, issue, there are several issues with it, but the second one is the fact that they've diluted some of the norms in the Forest Amendment Act, Forest Conservation Act, my bad. Um, is the first is, a lot of projects don't need the approvals that they would require before. The railways and the highways, uh, the ministry won't need forest approvals. And if the land near borders is considered important or strategic, they won't need permissions anymore. And if a, a land that's been forested after 1996 won't need, won't be protected. And uh, a customary afforestation won't be protected once again. So all of this really dilutes how we look at habitat and how environment is seen. And this isn't just the case today. We've been doing this with the EIA, which is the Environmental Impact Assessment last year. So we've been diluting a lot of norms uh, when it comes to environmental policy. So, Disha, I'm sorry I'm cutting on to you because I'm just looking at the clock and I've just got a note. So it's not just that the clock is ticking on the planet, it's ticking on us as well. Uh, so, you know, the, you've talked about the Environment uh, Assessment Act, uh, the, you know, Parquet Tiger Reserve. You're looking at that beautiful picture. We are allowing roads to go through that. We are allowing strategic projects to come up in the middle of biodiversity. And like you said, that we are beginning to equate tropical forests with just... Uh, monoculture, you know, trees that you're planting uh, which have no biodiversity. And again, I think we don't understand how important biodiversity is. So I'm, I'm going to just jump back to Malaika for a bit. Malaika, you, as I said, have been across uh, seven continents. Uh, you were talking to me earlier about the human brain, you know. So you've shot with tigers, you've been up close. Uh, tell me what sort of mind shift you had, you know, what was the experience of being so close to the species? I think, you know, I live in a city and I spend a lot of time in the jungle and that juxtaposition got me thinking, you know, humans have the most incredible brain. I mean, yes, often on camera I talk about how octopuses are really smart or tigers are remarkably intelligent, but the truth is that we are the smartest, we are the apex predator on this planet right now. and. Given that we have this brain that is so incredible, I mean, if you put us in the same room as a tiger, we'd be eaten in seconds. But yet, using our brain, we are able to build highways into you know, pristine forests. We're able to build massive amounts of infrastructure. But if we could also realize how important the climate crisis is and how important it is to combat it right now, we could actually use that very brain to, and harness that to change things around. And I think the solutions are there, the science is out there. And right now, it's just about realizing that this is a big enough issue to invest in. It's a big enough issue to be a national and a global priority. And I think that's what it really boils down to. Right. 